Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. Time for our weekly health segment with Dr. Darren Green. And today we're talking about a topic that you may or may not be able to stomach. We're talking about irritable bowel syndrome. Now, if you suffer from things like chronic tummy cramps, feeling bloated, gas or constipation, then this is definitely a talk that you might want to get into. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Mm. Darren Green, uh, Leanne just Good mentioned morning. a couple of symptoms. So I take it IBS is not just one condition can you yes, yes. delve a little deeper into so IBS that? stands for irritable bowel mm. syndrome mm. and obviously it, it comprises a host of symptoms uh, and when you've excluded a lot of other things that give you the same symptoms that's when you actually arrive at the diagnosis of, of IBS so it's not always the first diagnosis you think of if you think about the symptom complex that they present with mm. uh, involving obviously things like changes in your stools whether they be watery or runny with diarrhea or whether they be obviously uh, constipated with cramping and, and bloating and, and pain so and obviously uh, it, it does involve the the uh, the small and the large intestine but what we have is an irritable bowel and your bowel is broken up into a small intestine which is quite thin yeah. and what we see over there in that picture is the colon and uh, it's a functional disorder in other words it's a problem with the actual function of the gut we don't know what causes it and when you look at the gut it looks normal it just doesn't function normally and that's all yeah. the, the symptoms I always thought that food aggravates it but it's not necessarily what causes it, like no, you so said one doesn't really know. Correct, you see, so the, the bowel only actually needs to work when there's food in it, because if, if you're not eating anything, you can imagine it gets lazy and just sits there, mm. waiting for something to happen. Yeah. So when you eat, you'll no notice then typically the association of symptoms uh, after meals predominantly, mm -hmm. and often after sleeping in the morning when you do go to the loo for the first time, you'll experience then the, the different symptom complexes. Now, how do you know the, the difference between, you know, is it, is it an irritable bowel symptom or is it um, a funky food I perhaps ate? Yes, so, fun you know <laughs> so funky food would, would imply that you, you had something that may, might have been a bit off with a bit of food poisoning that gives you gas and bloating. And uh, the, the, the answer is you don't know because irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic condition that comes over time and normally it starts in early adulthood, not, not in children. Uh, but what you need to notice is that it's a chronic condition, so it will go and come back. Funky food will happen once uh, if you have, uh, you know, basically some food poisoning. And diarrhea is generally the, the main symptom there. Whereas constipation is actually one of the main features associated with irritable bowel syndrome. I've got a friend that blames IBS for everything. Constantly yeah. IBS, IBS, <laughs> IBS. But are there maybe some IBS. other <laughs> stomach, uh, stomach problems that uh, one could be having that's not actually 100 percent yes because they look the same don't yeah, yeah. they so constipation as an entity on its own can happen in children from the time they're born on and even drinking breast milk going all the way through to adult adult life uh, and uh, obviously other conditions are gastritis inflammation of the of the gut colitis inflammation of the colon mm -hmm. uh, but those you'd see obviously if you put a camera and you do a colonoscopy or a gastroscopy you'd see changes in the in the structures the anatomical structures in the membranes it'll be red swollen angry inflamed other conditions like Crohn's uh, celiac disease ulcerative colitis those are serious conditions of the gut uh, but you'd be able to recognize the pathology with working the patient up for persistent symptoms oh, well wow. thank you dr. Darren Green well we're going to continue the conversation with dr. Darren Green if you've got a comment or a question regarding you know stomach cramps or irritable bowel syndrome why don't you give us a call our number is 083 we have the doctor in the house to answer any questions you might have. It's my feel -good Thank you so much, team. Well, it is time for us to continue our talk with Dr. Darren Green. This morning, we're talking about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. If it's something that you are struggling with right now, do not fear. The doctor is here. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, Dr. Darren Green, um, when you have IBS, you're struggling with it, what are some of the foods you should definitely avoid? Things that give you gas. So everyone knows about oh. baked beans, cabbage, broccoli. broccoli. Yes. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows about those. But uh, also, there have been some associations with, we all need fibre in our diet. It's yeah. a debulking agent to push the leftover food through the gut. And, uh, you know, a lot of work's been done looking at soluble fibre versus mm -hmm. insoluble fibre. Uh, insoluble doesn't break down, and carries okay. on from the start right to the end. Things like bran, for example. Mm. Whereas oats uh, and things like spagula powder are very useful 
uh, in terms of insoluble fiber as a source. So uh, the, the, they, they speak about the FODMAPs, which I think our dietitian uh, referred to as well. And those obviously are important to, to avoid and have low concentration FODMAPs. And what we see with that specifically are foods that contain lactose uh, and then the ability to cause gas. So uh, like lactose, for example, if you have uh, chronic diarrhea, you might be sensitive to certain refined flours, white flour products, mm -hmm. as well as things like lactose and dairy products. So be aware of that as well. But oats is, a, is absolutely king, really useful uh, in people that suffer from... Uh, from irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. Now, on the reverse side, you just gave us some, you know, things not to eat, but you said we must get in more fiber. Which foods would you recommend for someone suffering from sure. IBS? Sure. So, soluble fiber is the good one that mm -hmm. you need. Uh, there's a powder, as I mentioned, and then the oats itself. If we think of, of things like uh, yogurt that have good cultures in them, uh, we need that. The probiotics okay. are useful uh, in the gut. Sufficient water supply. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, with that, certain seeds are also good, like linseeds, for example. Uh, so you, you must understand those are the things that contribute towards not disrupting the functioning of the gut. Because we don't know why people experience such severe cramping and increased movement of the gut in, in, uh, in IBS. We just know that it's triggered by certain foods and sometimes pre-running infections. Mm. Uh, and there's a lovely picture of obviously some beans and lentils and s different seeds as well yeah. that, are, that can be consumed. What about alcohol? Should we be consuming alcohol with IBS? You shouldn't, uh, especially <laughs> not in amounts that are, 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 that are large excessive. amounts. Yeah, 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 so yeah. You'd, want to, you'd want to limit it and you'd want to obviously uh, consume, if you are going to have a, a carbonated drinks uh, are no-no okay. specifically, uh, you'd want to have that, for example, with a meal instead of on its own as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because yeah. I know that there are a lot of people that struggle with IBS after a good party. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to continue chatting to Dr. Darren Green. So our lines are open. Give us a call 083 913 3728. If you've got a comment or a question regarding stomach cramps or IBS, we would love to hear from you. It's my feel good birthday show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. We are sitting with a doctor, of course, talking about irritable bowel syndrome. It's something that affects us all. We're talking about um, everything from what causes it, how to avoid it. But in terms of lifestyle, we're going to get into that a little bit later on. But we've got Benita on the line. Benita, good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Leanne, and you. Very, very well. Thank you, Benita. What is your question or comment for the doctor? Morning. Please, Leanne, you know, I've been diagnosed with... Uh, morning, uh, Dr. Green. Morning. I've been diagnosed with uh, Crohn's disease two years ago, but I seem to have a problem with my tummy, like, every single day. Hmm. And I now actually have a hernia, but I have been to the hospital, and they've advised that I should not have it removed. Good. So she's asking about the hernia being yeah, removed, yeah. obviously. Well, Crohn's disease is an interesting disease. Uh, it can be quite debilitating and mm. involves a lot of inf inflammatory episodes that can affect the inner lining of the gut. So if you go and look at it, we actually uh, do colonoscopies and biopsies of the gut wall and to make the diagnosis of Crohn's. And due to it being autoimmune mediated, we often need to put patients on high dosages of immunosuppressive therapy. Uh, which then uh, decrease the amount of flare-ups. Certainly there are certain foodstuffs as well that Padita would have to okay. remedy. But what she's asking now is about the hernia, which yeah. is a totally mm -hmm. different condition. Mm -hmm. And the hernia, if it's a, obviously a, what we call our haters hernia, yeah. leads to reflux and indigestion and dyspepsia as well and bloating. So mm -hmm. that would depend on the size of the hernia and also whether it's at risk of bowel protruding and strangulating as to whether it will need to be fixed. And uh, her gastroenterologist or a general surgeon would be, would be able to help advise her regarding when that time is. Okay. Okay. Well, wow. thank you for your call, Benita. Our lines are open, 83 913 Dr. D da uh, Darren Green, do you perhaps have, you know, some lifestyle advice sure. that perhaps Benita and all of those who suffer from IBS um, can adapt? Hmm. So IBS is very much a condition associated with your emotional well-being in terms of anxiety, your stress levels, your coping mechanisms of stress. Mm -hmm. So your lifestyle, obviously your match to dealing with those different lower stress-lowering uh, capabilities is a direct relationship. So you need to look at exercise as a way of regulating your stress levels. You need to also look at your meal spacing and how you eat. Don't leave large gaps between meal times. Don't skip meals. Have regular small meals rather than only 
only two big dumping meals a day. Yeah. And then obviously also rehydrate, drink sufficient fluids, etc. Your, your stress coping mechanisms might be episodic in your life. Often IBS follows a big event, a major event, like changing a home or a divorce or those kind of things, or relationships. So be aware of that. And if you need help, then get support from a team and family members. It, it takes a community to conquer the whole issue of IBS. It's not just a, 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 sol, a solitary yeah. road. Mm. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Darren Green. I want to know from you in terms of point form, who is more likely to get IBS and who isn't? We'll chat more about that after we head to the kitchen with Ewan. It's my feel-good breakfast show. And while we are continuing our chat with our doctor about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and doctor, I want to know from you, just in point form, so that I can understand it better, who is more likely to get IBS? Your fatigued, burnt out, not sleeping patient. Those are the pa people that are at risk. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you obviously need to consider that anxiety plays a major role. So if you're anxious, you're type A, type a go get a personality, you don't know how to set boundaries in your life, you are the, are the person that's at risk. That's quite interesting. Most prone. Yeah. Now, I have to ask you, doctor, you know, when you go to the chemist and you stand in line, there's all these uh, fibre powders that I see. Many Is of that them. something <laughs> that could help, you know, alleviate or at least ease, in, uh, ease it up? Sure. So we, we don't remove the cause at all, but what we can do is help with relieving the symptoms. And if your symptoms are constipation, for example, a lot of these soluble fibers, like uh, spigula powder, is very useful. But the problem is people take these preparations to have one good cleanse and clean yeah. out, but when, what happens is they forget the run-on maintenance therapy mm. for the next two weeks. And that's the word from the gastroenterologist as well. Yeah. Once you've cleared out the bowel, maintain, uh, see how many sachets of Mobicol, for example, you need for a period of, uh, of two weeks. Take uh, three sachets a day if you need to, but it's really, really important to maintain that over a period of time. And then adjust your diet, adjust your lifestyle and your, your eating. Fiber. Yeah. Is there any link between IBS and, let's say, your menstrual cycle? Yeah, there is certainly, because yeah. you can consider the, the stress on the female body is different as you prepare for menses as well. The inflammatory uh, reaction is also basically uh, woken up, and the hormone surge affects gut movements directly yeah. at that time of the month as well. Sure. Okay. Yo, doctor, thank you so much for joining us. It's a this pleasure. Morning. Thank you. I hope that helped in terms of, you know, if you are suffering from irritable bowel syndrome, you're able to now take in the food, uh, you know, the, the different foods that can help or also aggravate IBS. Well, thank you so much, thank Dr. Thank you, Darren doctor. Yes. Well, he'll be back again next week with us for your Medical Tuesdays right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show.